Hey, you guys. Happy with us today. Wednesday. This, I mean, y'all, the weeks go by so super fast. So today I want to do like a black and white design necklace and design idea. So I'm going through my old beads and necklaces and things that I need to take apart. Y'all, what was I thinking? This thing is hideous. Look, <laughs> this is my old jewelry cart. My company was called Mimi and Co. Cause we nicknamed, um, Miriam Mimi so we don't call her that often because I'm not a fan of nicknames but when she was little we did so this is a necklace that I made and it was like around Christmas time frame so I'm gonna cut all the white beads off because this is really what I want and I was gonna go buy some white beads and I was like certainly somewhere I have white beads so I'm gonna take that apart so we can make our project for today and I just wanted to show these. These are some polymer clay beads I made a long time ago. I used to be big on polymer clay. It was my first um, or second jewelry form. First, it was friendly plastic. Do y'all remember that? Oh my gosh, we're getting old. Um, I used to do friendly plastic. Then I did polymer clay for years. And I would make beads and sell them to other um, jewelry makers. So I have tons of my own homemade beads around here somewhere. I may use or do something with in a little while. But I also wanted to show you some of the beads I was talking about I purchased from wholesale shows I would attend in Greensboro. This is years back. So this was a necklace I had made. But look, these are the stones that you could purchase at the show. And I don't remember how much they were per strand, but they would come on this long strand, similar to what you buy at Michael's in terms of the bead strand. Let me see if I'm, I'm not sure if these will fall apart or not. No, they're still tied together. So when I would go to the show, remember I was telling you I have tons of beads, y'all. Are these not incredible? So these are like crosses um, that are made out of this beautiful purple turquoise color. And so the wholesaler that I would buy from is in Florida and um, just so beautiful. So they came in purple. I think these are so yummy. I got a whole strand of these, if not two strands. The orange beads came from there as well. And look, the crosses even come in this gorgeous teal. I mean, when I tell you I have a bead collection to live for, my husband would go with me and I wouldn't want him to send, see how much money I was spending. So I would say, honey, oh, look, they have watches because he is a watch fan. So I would send him away from me so I could shop for beads. That's why I tell you, I don't need another bead at all. And so I just wanted to share with you a few of the beads from my collection. Um, Cause again, like I mentioned, there's just so more. So this was kind of like a set of tribal beads when I was like, let me just get everything known to man sorry my lighting got messed up so i wanted like some aboriginal and tribal kind of beads or things that felt really natural so i got those and i wanted them to kind of go with these look how pretty those are and i just think really really pretty so i mean who doesn't miss the beat shows and miss being able to go out and have outings i do i know you all do too they just um enlisted a curfew Look how pretty those are. And these are all glass beads. Um, these seem like some nuts, I believe. And <clears throat> these are a glass bead with like um, white detailing that's been etched in. Really, really pretty. These remind me of coffee for some reason. <laughs> but there is a curfew in our area starting at 10 o'clock this Friday. I'm like, oh, gravy. But I just... I'm per I personally feel that we have to do something drastic to get the country back in order to get this virus under control and eliminate it. So I know that God is working it out. He is on the throne. I'm making a lot of noise, I know. So let me see, I'm trying to get the lighting to work with me over here. So this, these are some other ones. So at one point <clears throat> when I was at the beach, so I was like, okay, I wanna have some shinies. I wanna have some things that I can make dressier necklaces out of. So I got a lot of these glass beads that are really shiny or have like a really pretty iridescence to them that um, like a candy paint car, you know, they kind of change colors as you go by. Those are really pretty. I have no clue why they're in the bag with these. These are beautiful. So just really, really pretty. Oh, those are bra Oh, these are bracelets I started. Let's sit those over there. No clue how it ended up in there. 
So some of these have been cut, so I wanted to make sure. So look how pretty. So I just wanted to show you some of my bead collection. And I'm not sure how I want to store everything. Um, so that's why I keep it in the bags. I also have what they do when you go to the bead shows, when you go to wholesale bead shows, they write on the bag when you're putting it all together, how many you have of something. So like this was six strands at $12 each, which I think is a steal if you're gonna be um, wholesaling or if you're gonna be selling your beads. I mean, because they're really, really pretty. So of course I don't wear this, but I think it's really pretty. That was just some finished jewelry that I found. And these were some bracelets that I started a while back and I didn't finish. And um, just look how pretty, I mean, stacked bracelets, cuff bracelets and things like that, I feel like are in fashion right now, are really in style. I don't think they've ever gone out of style. So, you know, if you're into bracelet making, I think now would be a great time to get started making bracelets. Maybe this video would just be about jewelry hauls. Right? I don't know, because I don't want it to be too long, but I wanted to show you some other bracelets that I made. So I found those in the bag, but look, these are made with some word beads that I have. And I had gotten these word beads from, I believe, AC Moore a while back. I have a ton of them in the box, but like this one says serious. It says beautiful on the back. I know it's um, backwards for you, sorry. It says president and future on that side. So you can flip them over, they say different things. And then they also have dangles that hang down. So I love stackable beaded bracelets. This one is another one that I made. I had gotten this whole um, box of beads that came similar to this right here, but in a longer, in a longer package. I don't know where all those beads got off to. I really like the pastel colors of them. I went to look for them this morning, but couldn't find them. But anyway, I mean, you can just make stacks upon stacks of beads. Here I use the little oval alphabet beads you can get from Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Walmart. And I made just using some shimmery glass beads. And so look how you can just layer for arm candy. Super easy, super simple. So one of our videos this week or this weekend will probably be how to make those bracelets. Um, I know there's tons of videos across YouTube. I think the reason I didn't finish these might've been because I didn't glue the little knot yet. And I wanted to add some things to be hanging from them. But I mean, they are just really rich looking and really pretty. So I, again, I love, 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 love jewelry. Love making jewelry. And I always thought I'd be a jewelry designer. I think I told y'all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this, this thing apart. I do wanna, I think I wanna keep my old jewelry card though. Cause I love Mimi and Co. And I named it that after my sweet baby. She's upstairs doing her homeschooling, not homeschooling, but virtual learning, like all of our kids are doing. So what I'm gonna do is I think I wanna make a necklace with these white beads and with, Maybe, maybe that. I want something black and white. So let's go figure out a de our design and we'll be right back. Oh, look, this is something else that I made. So I think this is really pretty. I love how industrial it is. So I bought chain in different types, different lengths, different styles from Lowe's. So when I was in like this huge, um, like kind of chain, heavy, heavy jewelry, which is in right now, metal jewelry is in chain jewelry is in you can get this really great chain at lowe's it comes in this black color it's not heavy at all this is one of the stones that i bought also when i went to one of the bead shows it, come, it came in a whole link as well and just it's a really girthy weighty stone i love it it's really pretty so I may keep and wear that. I may keep and wear the other one too but look how pretty that is so the chain is like this lightweight metal and this will look really pretty with a tank top, um, a tank top or a turtleneck, a tank top under jacket for sure, a turtleneck. Um, and even though this is kind of bright, I mean, orange is still a really, so very much a fall color and a winter color. Turquoise is in style year round. So I just think that's really, really pretty. And then you can also make bracelets to match whatever it is you're doing to match your style and just layer it however you want to layer it. I'm very much, I love eclectic gypsy styles, um, things that are different from what everybody else likes and just layering jewelry like it is my thing. So 
Anyway, if you have not visited our Etsy shop, I encourage you to do that as well. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to get on with a project. So sorry for all the bantering for the last 10 minutes, but I just wanted to show you my collection and just some things I had designed in the past and just ramble. So anyway, let's get started making stuff. Oh, I know what else I wanted to do. I wanted to make another pair of these earrings as well because I thought they came out just so super cute. But now I want to do them with a black and white style or we may use the Aboriginal beads that we had and make something super cute with those. But I wanted something black and white to wear as well for an outfit. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, you guys, so you don't have to necessarily watch me cut off these beads, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a length of these that we're gonna use to make something on today. And I got inspired to make a necklace using white beads from a video I saw with a young, a young lady making Outer Banks jewelry, which is a show um, called Outer Banks. So I really, really liked what she was making and I really love the idea of a black and white aesthetic. So let's go ahead and cut these off and I'm actually gonna wash these beads because I made this necklace quite some time ago and I just don't want the beads to be dusty or whatever because it's been in my old jewelry making pile for a while. So we're gonna go ahead and wash these off and I'll be right back. I'm not gonna, and what I'm gonna do is just put them in some soapy water them around and let them dry and then we're going to use them to make something new so let me take these off of here and what i'm going to do is put these that we made and I already told you about those in a little pile over to the left and maybe we'll use them to make something later on i'm just thinking whenever i have a craft room in the near future trying to figure out how to get all this stuff organized because I genuinely want it to be like a setup where I'm trying to get this light straight. The light don't want to be my friend on today, but I want to be able to have everything easily accessible and laid out. So let's go watch these, wash these. And I'll be right back. Hey, you guys. So we are finally ready to start the project. I wanted to lay out everything that you're going to need. So of course you're gonna need beads of your choice that you wanna work with. And I have a pretty nice mix of beads from those that I've already shown you. So I have them laid out here so you can see them. You're gonna need your E6000 glue because guess what? We're gonna make a ring to match our um, necklace set that we're creating. So we're gonna do a necklace, earrings, maybe a bracelet. I believe we will do a bracelet. Depends on how much time we have because I've already lollygagged and talked too much. Today is a rough focus day for real estate. So I said, let me get on here and make a video right quick. And so you're gonna need some E6000 glue to glue your ring finding, which we're gonna make first. So that can be drying while we're making everything else. You're gonna need some eye pins, which you already know. You're gonna need some jump rings, split rings, because they already have the split in them. If you ha accidentally buy those that don't have the split you can always use a pair of wire cutters um, to make a split in your jump ring so it's no big deal and so you're going to need some findings i've already kind of laid out the design you're going to need some lobster claw clasp those are the ones i use you already know i get all my findings from hobby lobby and this is an earring finding i had from before so i have a lot of these left and i'm going to use that to make the focal centerpiece for the necklace, which we will probably make before we beat everything together because I wanna go ahead and get that out of the way. And then you're gonna need an assortment of beads. So I decided to use these really pretty seed beads. This whole string was about $12 when I bought them at a wholesale show back in the day, but a lot of these are semi-precious stones, so they cost a little bit more money. Um, these are really pretty as well. We're gonna incorporate the grays into our design. I already showed you the Aboriginal kind of beads. And then you're gonna need, like I mentioned, you're gonna need your jump rings, two crimp beads, and you're gonna need your fish hook ear wire. So like I mentioned, we're gonna do the ring first because it can be drying while we're doing this. So I'm going to move some stuff out the way. Let's put this over here. And I'm using these plates. You can use bead trays if that's what you prefer um, or a necklace um, 
tray. A lot of people use those. Um, these black beads are glass beads. The white beads are glass beads. And I got these black ones from, I believe, either Joann's Fabrics or I also got them from the wholesale show. But they're these really pretty faceted black glass beads. So I'm going to sit them over on the same plate with the white beads and get all this stuff out of the way. Scoop. And let's get our earring findings. I'm just gonna sit those up here. You can skip past this part to watch me get started making everything. But what I wanna have with me so far, I'm gonna leave the crimp beads over here because they get lost on the table. So what I wanna have with me is, look at this really pretty glass pendant. So my brother um, used to do glass art. He now does mainly beading, and um, but he does earrings, necklaces. He does a lot of... Um, awareness jewelry so like black lives matter um kamala harris a lot of things that um go along with his political views and his standpoint on where things are as a country so he does a lot of statement jewelry but when he did used to make glass jewelry in his kiln this was one of the things he made it actually was a bead and he let me keep these so i thought it would just be really pretty as a ring to go along with what we're making so what we're going to do is we're just going to take some of our e6000 glue and as you already know, I use the end of a paintbrush. This is just a um, hard plastic paintbrush. I don't, even, I don't know where I got these from. I think I got them from Michaels a while back. And so we're gonna put some glue right there in the center. And you wanna do a pretty generous amount because this is a really heavy stone. And I already decided, and look, these are adjustable ring bases. I got these from Hobby Lobby quite a while back. So I've had them a long time. I have them in bronze. I have them in a gold color. And I have them in silver. I have them in square. I have them in round and in oval. Because y'all, when I buy stuff, I get carried away. And it was when the coupons were a little bit better. So look how pretty that is. I'll try it on once it dries so you can see what it looks like, but it is gonna be really pretty with our jewelry set. So I wanna make sure to get just that little extra bit of glue off there. And once it starts to set, I'll press it down a little bit more because if I go to press it down now, it'll probably slide around a little bit. So let's sit that on a flat surface off to the side so it can be drying. I had it on the table, but I think what I'm gonna do It'll be good. So I set that off to the side. So now let's make the focal point for our necklace. So I've already decided that I wanna hang this little feather from this piece. So we're just gonna need to attach it with a jump ring. And I love these super chunky jump rings. I don't know why, but I just like them. So what we're gonna do is attach them that way. I put the feather on there and now we have a dangle piece for our earring. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another jump ring. And I figured it would just be easy to make the focal points first because then we could go ahead and get that out of the way. So I can either do it on a larger jump ring here or I can use a smaller jump ring, but let me just share with you that this little piece is gonna be another part of the focal point for the necklace. So what I wanna do is decide on the middle design. I don't wanna overthink it. I'm thinking that I might use some of these smaller gray beads. Let me see if the our um, eye pen may not fit through the hole. It just depends, let me see. No, so the little hole in that bead is gonna be too small. So we won't be able to use those for this because those are really thin. So what we're gonna do is, let's see if this gray one, so that fit really nicely. Oh shoot, had a bead escape. So what we can do is put our gray beads in here and we can do the pendant this way or we could do it black and white. But what I notice is that in using the um, this particular eye pen, it doesn't leave me very much space up here. So let me try to bend it and see how much space it's gonna give me in order to make a ring. It may be enough, it looks like it might be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend using our round nose pliers. And you all, you can get this whole set of, I didn't get mine from there, but you can get a set of really great tools and jewelry making implements at the Dollar Tree. I mean, literally they have 
um, all the things that you need to begin a jewelry jewelry making business and a jewelry making venture. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a smaller jump ring because this is gonna be our necklace focal point. So what I decided to do is make that first. So when I start making the necklace, this piece is already ready to go, already ready to put on the necklace and we can just keep going because the rest of it is just kind of stringing beads and with a really nice design. So this is what we have so far. It's gonna be really pretty. I'm gonna do it probably similar to a choker style, but we're gonna add an extension. So anytime you order a necklace from our Etsy store, there's gonna be an extender to go along with the necklace. So even if we're marketing it as a choker, it's gonna be able to fit your neck, okay? So also, if you wanna send us a note when you go to order any necklace from us, you can let us know the size and we can make sure that the extender is long enough as well. So look how pretty that is. Oh wait, I'm out of focus, out of the camera. I think that's gonna be really pretty. So again, it's still drying. I need to make sure it's straight. I think it's my finger is crooked and not that the bead's not straight. <laughs> So let's straighten it up a little bit. We're going to push it down. And let's try it on one more time. And then we can always tighten it as well. So that's going to be really pretty. So let's continue to sit that over to the side to dry. We already have our focal point for our necklace. And now what I need to do is go hunt down the bead that escaped. I'm going to put little crimp beads to the side. And we need one more eye pin because remember we're making earrings. So we want some eye pins for when we get ready to do our earrings. And because those gray beads are gonna be too small, I'm gonna have to find something to take the place of the idea. So we'll do that. So for now, we're gonna start with our two jump rings because we're gonna go ahead and make our necklace. So I use monofilament line. This is a 20 pound line it's 0 0.018 in diameters and this is 250 yards i could probably make necklaces with this until jesus comes back i mean you can make long short medium double triple strand whatever you want there is a lot of wire on this spool so that's what i use um but you can use any type of beading wire that you can buy from the store i find that wire to be to honest to be honest to be kind of expensive. And so I just, I've always used fishing wire before bead, beading wire, before beading wire was a thing. So we're gonna put our crimp bead on. I've shown you this before, so skip past this if you've already seen me do this 20 million times in another video. You're gonna put your jump ring on or split ring, whichever you're using. And then you're gonna fold your wire over the jump ring and you're gonna feed it through your crimp bead so it should look like this and it should form a loop. So that's what keeps this on the end. And this is what keeps your beads from falling off. Now you do wanna use or leave, I'm sorry, a bit of a loop on there because you want your necklace to have some give. You want it to have a nice flow to it. You don't want it to be all tight. And then you just wanna press down with your flat nose pliers and you're ready to start making your necklace. So again, I had kind of already laid out the design I wanted. So remember, I want a bit of a black and white design. So I'm just gonna start stringing the beads along. Now, some of these beads are more like a translucent and some of them are an actual white. So I have to be sure to be mindful of that and pay attention to that while I'm stringing them along. So I believe that I'm gonna make sure to go for the white ones that are like a tiger eye. I'm trying to, I'm fighting with this light today, I apologize. So I'm gonna go with the white ones that seem more tiger eye-like. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the end of the design like the section closest to the clasp. I'm gonna make that part of the design mainly white. And then we get to the center, we're gonna do the black and we're gonna do the Aboriginal type beads. So let's get started, that's what we're gonna do. And I also believe, I wanna start with some of the smaller beads. Who you guys reference real estate today? I'll be honest, people have just been cantankerous. Not the um, clients, but the people that I have a cross sale with. Ooh, when I tell you one agent just had me calling on the Lord, I said, mm, Jesus, take the wheel, drive fast in the opposite direction, cause she had me hot. 
So I said, let me just take a minute to be with you all and be on chill mode, and then I gotta get my work done. So not that this isn't work too, right? Because it's our Etsy business, but I just needed a minute. So I said, let me come spend my minute with you making something really gorgeous. Are you, hey, you guys, have y'all started Christmas shopping yet? I have not. My mom asked me what I wanted. My husband asked me what I wanted. And I, I don't feel like I want or need anything. Well, I do probably want some things. I want a beach house, right? <laughs> I'm like, can you buy me that? Like, if y'all gonna buy me something, buy me something big, right? I want a right hand ring. What else do I want? I want a facial scrubbing brush. Um, just stuff like that. But I really, it doesn't matter to me if I don't get it. I think because my favorite holiday seriously is Thanksgiving. If you consider it a holiday, I do. And I just don't, I don't care. I don't want to say I don't care about Christmas gifts because I do like to receive presents, but it's not a big deal if I don't get any. So look how pretty that is. And because we're doing a choker, I want to be mindful not to keep adding 20 million beads. I wonder if these little gray beads would fit on the string. I'm not going to use them in this design. I'm just curious. That's a tight little bead. I mean, that look, that barely would even go through the wire. So I don't know what you would use. I don't even know what I was thinking about us. But I have them now, so we'd have to figure out what could go in there. It'd have to be some really, really thin wire. So let's string on some black beads. I forgot to do a count, but now that we have them on here, we can start doing a count as we're working on the design. I think it's gonna be really pretty. So this is gonna be a gray, black, and gray design, which I think is quite fitting for winter. I think it's gonna be really pretty. And I wanted to just have this simplicity about it that's really, really pretty. So let me put it around my neck right quick to see how close we are to chokerliciousness. And we're pretty close. So let's see. I'm just feeding that little tail back through there right quick for the um, the wires. So now I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of the gray beads. Now remember I told you these are semi-precious stones, so these won't be two, four, six, seven. This, this won't be the cheapest necklace set. It won't be like ungodly expensive either, but at the same time, this is not like just cheap plastic beads. These are really beautiful semi-precious stones. I do have a book and um, I'll have to find the catalog so I can go through there and find out what kind of stones these are. But they're really, really pretty. So because I already have some of the Aboriginal beads cut off of another string, I just need to go grab a few of those right quick. Because there was one we had already cut open. There we go. So I had to go grab some of those. So let's see what we're looking like so far. So, so far, that's what the design is like. I'm gonna put it around my neck, see how it fits. And I like it. So it's probably gonna be a little bit longer than a choker. I don't want to have to go back and pull anything off of here. So now what I'm gonna do is let me try one more time to see if any one of these little gray beads will fit on here. Because I really would like to butt it up against the um, the focal bead design, but it's no big deal if not, no. It said no, absolutely not. Bye and no thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I was just trying to see what else is in there. So let's put our centerpiece on. And so what I'm going to do is I want to make sure our centerpiece is closed. So I'm going to clamp it down because if not, by this having a split in it and this wire being so thin, it could slide off if it's not closed tight enough. So I want to make sure that was closed tight enough. And also I'm going to put it on the other way because there is a front and back to that little earring piece that I'm using as a design. So there we go. So look, I think that's really pretty so far. And you could make, listen, as many dangles as you want. I think that'd be really, really pretty just to have a necklace with tons of different dangles. I love chunky jewelry. So we'll probably do some chunky designs in the future as well. 
do as I Okay, so I'm sorry I had the reply to a message. So let's go ahead and get this finished. But what I was sharing with you is that you can make tons of dangles to hang from your necklaces. I mean, love ch I love chunky jewelry. I feel like we'll make some chunky jewelry too. I think you have to have a plan when you're going to make chunky jewelry too. So it's not so heavy and that the average person wearing it will be comfortable. With, I don't want to say average, but the person wearing it, that they will be comfortable. These little gray beads are putting up a ruckus today. Come on, guys. Calm down. I think they're just excited. Okay. <laughs> so let's put the gray beads on. And this one is coming together really nicely. So we're going to do the earrings next. And we'll be finished. I think that we will work on a bracelet. I'll show you how I do one. You can do a bracelet on the stretchy string. I just have to hunt my stretchy string down. And you want to make sure that if you're going to do a stretchy string necklace or a stretchy string bracelet that you have um, the type of glue that will, I'm just adjusting this light, the type of glue that will not dry rot your string. Because if and when that happens, that's why you end up having beaded bracelets that pop. So let's see, two, four, six, seven, two, four, six, seven. So coming together nicely. I just want to make sure our necklace is symmetrical. So that's how it's looking so far. I love the black and white design. Super cute. And I'm thinking that we're going to do a dangle from, thank you, Miriam. Sorry about that. Thinking that we're going to do a dangle from the bracelet as well, just to keep everything having movement. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. So be sure to count your beads, make sure everything's even on each side. Cause look, you already know in the last one of the videos got to the end and had to undo it, but that's okay. It happens. <laughs> Just don't want it to happen. It's like starting over. So let's keep going. Two, four, six, eight, seven, eight, 10, 11. And then we have, um, four of the smaller white beads. Ooh, I'm pushing it to the end with this one. I almost made the string too short, probably because it's a little bit longer than choker length um, when I cut it. It's probably where it got off just a little bit, but let's go ahead on this side and feed our wire back through and prayerfully, we'll have enough room to close it up, so. That's what it's looking like so far. I think it's really, really pretty. I love the black and white style. But look, I literally don't have enough tail or a lot of tail left. That did not sound good. <laughs> but there's not a, a lot left at the end. Um, and you kind of want to make sure to have a little bit more than that most of the time so that your necklace can have, what's the word I'm looking for? So it can have stability and strength. So I just had to grab another jump ring and we do have enough to fish back through. But like I said, I prefer to have more than this, but fortunately we have enough to fish through. So I'm going to have to use the pliers to help me push it through. And then we're going to pull it taut on the other end just to make sure there's no, um, gaps in the necklace when we got to close it up. So you do have to be kind of ambidextrous when making jewelry. So I'll close that off. And now I just need to get our lobster claw clasp. Now, depending on if you're left-handed or right-handed. So normally I would just apply the lobster claw clasp directly onto the jump ring, but this time I'm just gonna be a little extra and add a little jump ring, add the lobster claw clasp and then close it up and then we're gonna clamp it down so that it stays that way. Let me try it on right quick and see how it falls. Oh, cute, and it's way longer than um, choker length. So that's probably why I ran out of necklace tail at the end, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like right quick, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on. So today I'm working from home. I have not yet undone my hair yet. I will when it's time to go meet my clients. So look, it's actually longer than choker length, and it goes down or falls down into like cleavage area, so we don't wanna be showing all that. So let's pull it up some, and I think it looks really, really pretty. I love the accent feather hanging down. I love the fact that it has 
that focal piece in the middle. Really, really pretty. So now we just need to make the earrings and we're gonna make a bracelet to go with it. And then we already have our ring and we'll have a full set together. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the earrings. So what I wanna do is you need your jump rings and you're gonna need two different sizes. You're gonna need the larger size and you're gonna need two smaller ones. So one large, one small. And again, you can use whatever size you want, but I just prefer these when making earrings. So because this necklace has a lot going on, we wanna make the earrings to me just kind of simple. And not only that, we wanna make them light because we do wanna use a pair of the folk, I'm sorry, we do wanna use some of the focal beads that we have for the earrings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do one of the gray and one of the Aboriginal beads and that's it we're going to keep it simple just like that let me see if i want to add a black one because again i just don't want them to be too heavy that is a really great weight they look really pretty and then what we're going to do is ugh, less is more i just want to keep adding stuff <laughs> right so we're going to go ahead and cut the end off before i get carried away and decide to add another bead we're going to use our round nose pliers and turn towards ourselves back a little bit and then we're going to close it right that's going to give us a nice closure and then what we're gonna do is use our smaller jump ring. We're gonna open it up. Sorry about that. Open it up and then we're gonna add our fish hook ear wire. And with this one, it doesn't matter how you put it on there front because this, there's no front or back to this earring. So it really only matters, you know, when we're um, trying to decide which way for it to go when there's a front and a back. So look how pretty that is. We're gonna make its matching little partner to go with it, and then we're gonna make a bracelet. So let's make sure that our gray beads match up because they have different variegations going through them. I don't know if you can tell or not, but they have like some blue running through, some brown, some light gray, and some dark gray. So we wanna make sure our beads match up. And then we need another one of our little Aboriginal beads. I could just sit here and do this all day. I wish that this, I don't wanna say this is what I wanna do full time, but I do like it a whole lot. So we got that done. I love real estate, so I don't think that I wanna ever stop doing that as long as the Lord leads. But I would love to do more jewelry design. And I had thought about offering classes on design and jewelry, but just not sure when I would have time, but certainly know that I'm thinking about it. I don't know, would y'all be interested in that? What do you think? They'd be super affordable, nothing crazy. Um, but I am thinking about it. Let me know in the comments what you think about me teaching some jewelry making classes, even the painting classes. So our next design may be something where we're painting because I have a, um, an idea I got in the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep the other night. And I had an idea for the jute that I want to use that involves a couple of little painted pieces. So we have those two. I'm gonna make sure they match up. And then we're gonna cut off the end. We're gonna use our round nose pliers or we're gonna go to the larger part. Notice that there's different diameters on, diameters on your round nose pliers. So you can make your loop as wide or as small as you want. So I'm using kind of like the middle of it and then we're gonna bend it towards ourselves back and close. So now you wanna make sure it's closed. So when you go to put your jump ring on there, it doesn't go sliding off and around. I just need to grab a small little silver one I feel like stuff is leaving the table. Like, is it walking away when I'm not looking? <laughs> but anyway, so this project is coming together really quickly. And so now we wanna do is put our jump ring on that earring. We're gonna close it up. Now our earrings are finished. So now we have a necklace, we have earrings, and we have a ring that is still drying. And look how fast we whipped all this up. The part that's taking the longest really is me filming and me talking. So let's close that up. And now I'm gonna put these on the white background on the paper so you can see what they look like. They're really pretty. I love the movement. I love all the different facets and iridescence that they have. Let me give you, I'm trying to separate them. Let me give you a close. So look how cutesy wootsy they turned out. I love them. I think they are really pretty. So I'll be loading them into the Etsy store. So now let's go and make the matching bracelet. 